Hey guys, welcome to the Open Collab. Everything you hear here is ACE approved. Let's move on to the next slide. Um, no, we're really glad you're here and uh, we started the recording a little late. So um, what I'm gonna do now is really just talk about from where I sit as somebody who is not currently teaching, but talking to a lot of really frantic teachers. Um, I basically took what I was seeing um, nationally as people were trying new ideas um, in their classrooms to deal with the COVID crisis. And what I've seen from working um, here in the collab with Plymouth State faculty, some of the collab's best advice for um, what we would do if we were you right now getting ready to head into spring semester. And some of you are like, what about you know, winter session, because I'm teaching a course that starts in two weeks. Um, so this may be for some of you too. Uh, the first thing I wanna say is across USNH, for those of you who are teaching at least in part face-to-face, -face, um, their uh, administrators are telling us that there are giant rooms available. Um, so I just wanna remind you that if you think that there's any possible way that your class will work in a room that's a little different from where you usually teach, um, go ahead and talk now with your administrators about rehoming your class because there is a possibility that you will be able to get a larger room that would allow 100% of your students um, to meet in ways that maybe you weren't able to do last semester. So if I were you, one of the first things I'd be doing is um, checking on my classroom and getting a larger space if I felt like that's what I mean. Um, but we're going to go back to an idea that the collab introduced uh, a few months ago, which was really about event based teaching. Um, we came up with this after we had introduced High Flex. Most of you at this point, um, like all of America, know and enjoy High Flex teaching, um, which is the idea that you, as a faculty member, can teach every single modality all at once, right? You can teach an asynchronous online class. You can have some students sitting in your classroom while you're lecturing. Other students are on Zoom and you're manning the chat and the Zoom and your whiteboard and you've got the async people and everything's hunky-dory. Um, and there's certain times when HyFlex is really helpful. Um, one example of that, and I know uh, that all of our campuses dealt with this to a certain degree, um, at any given time, you may have 50 to 200 students on your campus quarantining. So even if you have a face-to-face -face class in a very large classroom, they can't get there. And we certainly don't wanna disenfranchise them because there's a global pandemic and they are at extra high risk. So that's a great time when they may zoom into your class um, for a couple of weeks as they're quarantining or um, recovering from COVID. So sometimes you might want to do that, but what, what lots of faculty talked about um, this past semester was that people um, over time just stopped coming to class and were taking more and more advantage of the high flex environment. And it actually wasn't really working for faculty because you felt like your attention was super divided between the online and the face-to-face -face classes. So one of the things um, the collab is suggesting is that we use high flex to deal only with um, COVID situations or situations where high flex really is the preferred modality. But in other cases, what we do is we try to focus on either a face-to-face -face class or an online synchronous class or an online asynchronous class. Um, and we think about classes rather than courses because a single course may use all of those modalities at once. At Plymouth State, we're now calling that hybrid, um, where people are able to move in and out of different modalities. Let me give you an example of what this might look like. You teach a Monday, Wednesday, Friday course in literature. Perhaps Monday's class time is a synchronous online lesson of some sort. Everybody comes on Zoom. You don't have to worry about social distancing. You can give your full attention to everybody in their little boxes and have your, um, your synchronous class. You can teach it much the way you used to teach face-to-face, -face, but your attention doesn't have to be divided. You can build your PowerPoints in here and deal with it. Um, on Wednesday's class time, you have an optional face-to-face -face class where you're discussing the novel. 
um, and you tell people, you know, come come to the class if you want to have a, a discussion on the novel. The Friday class time is a synchronous online Zoom chat with a scholar who writes about that novel. They live um, in, in um, uh, Arizona, but the cool thing is that now with Zoom, it's really simple for that scholar to Zoom in. It's something you couldn't have done as easily in a face-to-face -face class, so how awesome that we have these online architectures now. And you run a synchronous um, Zoom chat with that scholar and any students who want to attend. You may also have an art collaboration going on asynchronously that students can participate in using a tool like Padlet. Um, there may be a, um, an event by the New Hampshire Poetry Alliance on Tuesday evening and students could attend that. And what you do is you say this week, you have to attend the mandatory lecture on Monday and two of the four optional events. You've basically built a, built a suite of choices and each choice is specifically designed for its modality. It wouldn't work nearly as well in the other modality. Um, and people can pick and choose depending on where they are um, with, with their uh, needs. This doesn't replace homework. Homework still happens. So you still assign your homework just the same. These are your actual quote unquote seat time experiences. Um, you can do all sorts of different stuff with this. And again, I'm really drawing a lot here from um, some of that early work that Martha did, um, which you can find in the ACE framework under the high flex section, where she really tried to think about um, um, highly flexible ways of building courses rather than hybrid flexible. So another thing would be, let's say you have a Tuesday, Thursday environmental science class. Um, maybe you have during the Tuesday thing, um, an asynchronous lecture. So anytime they want, they can watch the recorded lecture by Tuesday. And then on Tuesday or Thursday, they come to their assigned lab and um, half the class is there for one day and half the class is there for the other day. Um, this comes from a model that Martha discovered some faculty were using with great success where they were basically splitting their class. So half the class was coming Tuesdays, half the class was coming Thursdays and the rest of the work um, was moved to an asynchronous online format. Um, you could do this with labs too. Think about flipping the labs. Now I know sometimes a lab is a, a three hour event, but we know that we have retooled things and we are being flexible and rethinking things. Maybe if you teach a biology class and you have a Monday, Wednesday class and a Thursday lab, maybe you actually do Monday and Wednesday as your split lab times between two different um, cohorts of students and you use that longer Thursday lab time for an online class with all of your folks. What I'm saying here is like, I don't know anything about biology. Do not take my, you know, you, you guys are like, I can't do that. That's not how labs are set up. You're right, you're right. Whatever you know is right. What I'm saying though, is that think about the times that you do have and try to figure out creatively how you could unbox them so that you can really focus on a modality that works. Um, you could, this is uh, another kind of optional menu of things um, that goes to this new model that Martha was working on with um, some other faculty where uh, group A comes on Mondays, group B comes on Wednesdays, and then there's a whole suite of um, optional ways to engage to replace that other seat time um, that you are missing. The idea here is that you want to design intentionally for the modality that you are working with. Um, what you're gonna see in this week's worth of stuff um, that we're offering here is that there's a lot about online and that is designed because a lot of people are gonna be teaching either exclusively online courses or you're, even if you're teaching an exclusively face-to-face -face course, you're gonna find that because of quarantining because of room limitations, um, that you are going to end up in these online modalities at some places. So what we're gonna suggest is instead of just letting that Zoom camera in the corner of your classroom do all of the pedagogical hard work, instead you think about how you could unbox your class a little bit so that instead of your course being delivered in one modality, um, you're taking smaller pieces of it, chunking it up and figuring out how to deliver it so you can really focus. 
really the main thing we heard over and over again in the collab was that um, it was very distracting for faculty to try to engage in multiple ways at once. So use that high flex sparingly. For example, you've got one student in quarantine. Okay, let them zoom in for a couple of weeks. It's not gonna be ideal, but they're only there for a couple of weeks. Um, the most important thing I think about this method is that if you are teaching face-to-face -face in some ways, um, you're going to need to talk to your students before the semester begins to explain, hey, we really are gonna try to do this um, face to face in these certain ways um, so that your students understand what to expect. It's um, a lot of students we realized last semester came in thinking that because high flex was sort of a new thing that every morning when they wake, woke up, they were gonna get to decide, do I wanna be online or do I wanna be face to face? What we found over time is that mostly they preferred to be online because it was easier um, in terms of the busyness of their life, not because it was better for their learning. So again, we're suggesting that you make it maximally flexible for students who need it, but it's absolutely okay to require them to attend these face-to-face -face, um, pieces in these chunks if that is how your course is, is built. Um, the last piece I just wanna say is that if you do have students who you think for their own safety prefer to be online for the entire semester, think about that early, whether you're gonna make that an option or not. Um, if you feel sort of ethically like you wanna make that an available choice, build it into your course design from the beginning so that those students aren't just relegated to high flexing in all the time. Make it intentional so that you are really designing what you're promising them, which is a fully online class. If you can't deliver a well-designed, fully online class, then don't promise it to your students. Um, so the suggestion here is to balance these modalities and design um, as intentionally as you can. What we're gonna do um, for, for Jumpstart is basically each morning from nine to 9.30, you're gonna get a little taste of collab um, tips and tricks, the kind of thing that you just saw right now. Um, so on a particular morning, um, we will design the program um, and, and offer you just a little glimpse of something. Um, then we'll have our guest speaker come in from 9.30 to 10.30. It's important to understand that these guest speakers are not part of a cumulative course. Um, this uh, jumpstart thing is not meant like if a lot of you participated in the ACE workshop, that was really like building on itself kind of like an on online course. Um, you can come and go to these as you desire. You don't have to attend all of them. Um, if you came this morning and you're like, oh my God, Robin, that was the least helpful thing. That was the worst thing I ever heard. It's totally unhelpful. I'm going to tell you other things will be completely different. And so it might be worth coming back. Um, so if one speaker isn't your cup of tea or useful, make sure you look at the descriptions because they are different from each other and they cover different things and you can pick and choose um, according to what you want. So that'll go 9.30 to 10.30 every morning, Monday through Friday. And then at 10.30, the speakers uh, will leave, but Martha and I and Hannah will stick around so that if you wanna debrief a little bit or talk about your plans, if you wanna do a little work that day, what you might work on, any aha moments that you might have had, um, you can stick around, but you can also sign off right at night at um, 1030 and you'll be you'll be done. Uh, on certain days, we have extra content coming from learning and teaching technologies team um, out of enterprise services, who is our USNH um, IT team. So these are open to everybody. Um, today we have one on course design for the learning management system. So. It's LMS agnostic, whether you design in Moodle or Canvas. This is about um, designing courses that really uh, use the LMS as their central organizing tool. Um, we also have an intro to Canvas for Moodle users coming later this week. So you can put that on your calendar if it's interesting. Um, from three to four each day, Martha and I will be back in this Zoom room and all sessions for all Jumpstart stuff are at this same link that you came to today. So all week long, we'll be right here. Um, so from three to four, Martha and I will be back. 
these are really designed primarily for Plymouth State faculty. Um, if you need more one on one support or you've got uh, specific questions about your courses, you can pop back in and know that those open hours are reserved for you. Um, Plymouth State folks can also make appointments with uh, CoLab staff by using um, our appointments calendar, which is at our homepage. So you can make that <clears throat> for any time this week or uh, after this week going forward. Um, for folks at the other USNH campuses, I will direct you to your um, instructional designers and teaching and learning centers, um, and they can also make appointments with you um, to support you. For tech help, we are all now working with um, Enterprise uh, Technology ETNS. I think that's ESNT, ETNS. Um, and this is the Plymouth State portal, but you all have portals on your own campuses. So I just wanna remind you that the tech folks are the people that you talk to if you have like a specific LMS question, um, you wanna start setting up your grade book early, you have Zoom questions and you need a training on Zoom. Um, those are all anything related to sort of tools and stuff. Um, you're going to go to our tech team for that kind of stuff. So that's how Jumpstart will work. Um, again, I will put into the chat this slide deck um, because it has those live links there if you want to click on them. Um, but I'm just gonna give it a second here before the next order of business is going to be uh, to, well, actually I guess this, that was the next order of business was to say, attend one or all of them and also, the jumpstart idea really was that we have a nice long uh, break coming for some of you who aren't teaching in the winter sessions that we offer. Um, we'd really like to see you take a break and enjoy a break um, and think about the benefit of the wisdom that you have at this moment, having just finished, uh, to get a little bit of a jumpstart on things so that you feel uh, good once uh, where it starts, starts creeping up on us. Um, so the goal is to get you by the end of this week into a good position where you feel like you've you've um, retooled your classes and you're and you're ready to go. So before we talk about Dave, um, who is our speaker for today, who I know you guys are going to adore, um, I'm going to stop uh, sharing because we have about five minutes, and I just want to make sure uh, that people don't have any questions about how Jumpstart is going to work or how to find support or anything that we just chatted about. You can absolutely unmute and uh, ask away. Or put it in the chat. The procrastination hole does not look comfortable. Trust me, it's very hard to get out. We have, we've been making like, you know, a new collab slogan every day. So I think perhaps we are all in the hole together would be a good collab slogan for this particular winter break. T-shirt. Right. Uh, anybody need anything? Questions, y'all good? Um, every time my phone rings now, I feel like it's gonna be contact tracing for my kid's school, so boy. Okay, silence. Um, okay, well, welcome and thank you for coming. Um, I think actually, Martha, what do you think? Shall I stop recording and start recording to make these easier bites? Yeah, why don't I go ahead and do that? Yeah, let's do that.